The release of F-123 gives us the most complete version of the F-1 series to date, both in pushing its in-house Ego engine and also adding to the game's huge range of modes. Developer Codemasters truly doubles down here with more. More ways to play, more variety in the form of a new episode in the Breaking Point story, reuniting us with character Aiden after a two-year hiatus as we climb the ranks of the F1 world. We get the full career mode as usual, and even split-screen, but also more ray-tracing features. This year, dynamic, diffuse global illumination is added on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, S and PC, and so for F1 23, DDGI adds to an already extensive list of ray tracing technologies from last year's game, on top of ray trace reflections, ambient occlusion, transparencies, and shadows. So, just how big an upgrade is the game with DDGI enabled? Is it a massive difference? And secondly, just how close do the PS5 and Series X versions get in comparison to a fully maxed out PC release where ray tracing engages in actual gameplay? And lastly, how does a PC GPU, like the RTX 4080 in example today, need to be set up to get there? Let's find out. Let's get to the basics first. As far as the console releases go, both PS5 and Xbox Series X use much the same setup as F122. In direct comparison, they push the same core visuals, both target 3840x2160 during gameplay with matching shadows, textures and draw distances. And as before, each console does get ray tracing features but with a catch. The ray trace reflections, shadows and ambient occlusion and even the new DDGI all engage. However, it's only active in the game's menus, the pre-race build-up scenes and replays. For any actual gameplay, PS5 and Series X revert to typical rasterized techniques instead for shadows, reflections and so on. The Ego engine switches settings the exact moment you're able to accelerate at the starting grid, which means, for example, ray trace reflections are swapped out for screen space reflections (SSR), and likewise we get screen space AO instead. Interestingly, the resolution is also dynamic on each console, but as you'd expect, the resolution only typically drops under 4K in the moments where ray tracing engages. So for example, at lowest, I've spotted 3072 by 1728 during replays, and alongside the res drop, these areas also tend to run at an obviously sub 60fps frame rate, or even 30fps capped in the menus. A quick note on Series S next. Impressively, we get all the same ray tracing features here as on PS5 and Series X, even the new global illumination kicks in, which I'll get to in a second, and yes, it's also got all the same compromises in that the ray tracing only works in the menus, pre-race scenes and replays. The other drawback? Well, if we compare Series S directly to Series X, the resolution takes a noticeable hit down to 1080p. The upside is the TAA method, the temporal anti-aliasing, does a reasonable job of clearing the rough aliased edges and image quality generally holds up pretty well. So the good news, F123 on Series S doesn't miss out on any visual features which we're so used to seeing in other games. Jumping over to performance testing next, and the frame rate in F123 is a curious point. Whether it's PS5, Series X or S, Codemasters has seriously put in the legwork to make sure it's a rock solid 60 frames per second on each. As far as the core racing experience goes, all are in perfect shape. PS5 for example locks to 60 even on the most taxing circuits like Monaco, with all AI cars in view and heavy rain. It just flies through, and likewise for Series X here. Not a single frame dropped. Sure, we missed the ray tracing, but the net result is the quickest response a 60Hz monitor is able to muster. And better yet, 120Hz displays are also supported by selecting the performance mode in the menus, which I'll get to in a moment. Keeping to this default quality mode though, you're getting a flawless experience, where even Series S is well optimised. The lower target of 1080p on Series S is a steep drop in pixels being pushed, but the payoff is pretty clear. Now, with all that in mind, there are a few quirks to how the Ego engine is set up on console, and they reveal just why ray tracing isn't included on console during gameplay itself. The menus and pre-race scenes for a start are 30fps capped, no doubt to hide the performance drops under 60. And in a similar vein, the cockpit view just before a race uses ray tracing too, 
but in this case applies no frame rate cap on PS5, Series X or S. All of which means we get the raw performance metrics for just how the game might have run with RT features. In practice then, with ray tracing enabled, we're looking at 30 to 40 FPS at the starting grid on all consoles, and curiously, once the race finishes, the AI takes control of the vehicle with an alternative camera view, and ray tracing kicks in again, only this time it's uncapped with no V-Sync. So screen tearing is introduced running up and down the frame, and again we have performance between 30 to 40 FPS on PS5, Series X and S. The point being that it clearly wouldn't be enjoyable playing like this with ray tracing, but also it makes you wonder if other cutbacks, in resolution especially, could potentially claw back performance to 60 FPS on these machines while keeping ray tracing intact. Next along, let's check out the 120Hz mode on console. Really, 120fps is a perfect fit for F1 23, and it's only supported on PS5 and Series X via their performance modes. In other words, Series S is left out here with no toggle. For PS5 and Series X, the resolution drops to a 1440p target, with parts of the image scaling down to 720p in the worst case. But with all that in place, it's rock solid at 120. Even in this extreme scenario on Monaco with 20 cars and heavy rain, it barely buckles on either console. Bizarrely enough though, ray tracing does still engage in this mode during the pre-race cockpit view and the replays, and with predictably disastrous results for the frame rate. And in a way, this answers our earlier question. What if Codemasters were to drop the resolution on console to 1440p and under in this case, in order to enable ray tracing with 60fps in mind? Now, the game is fully unlocked to 120fps here, but sadly, yes, adding ray tracing here drops the frame rate to 40 to 50fps, which is still a boost over the 30 to 40fps range we have in the 4K quality mode by around 10 frames per second. The drop from 4K to 1440p helps, clearly, but it's still not enough to allow ray tracing in gameplay at 60fps. For that, at least right now, we have to turn to PC. Let's jump over to the PC version to see what we're missing out on console then. In this case, I've set up an AMD Ryzen 7 5700X machine with an NVIDIA RTX 4080 GPU, and honestly, even this isn't enough to lock down 60fps at 4K with all ray tracing features. More on this performance point in a moment, but here's the menu. We're gunning for 4K resolution here, all settings maxed out, and every ray tracing toggle enabled. It's the works, but yes, 60fps just isn't quite in view, just left as is. As a workaround, I'm using the DLSS quality mode, essentially rendering the game at 1440p with a smart AI upscale to 4K, to cope with the addition of ray tracing. The advantage being, actual gameplay now permanently runs with ray trace reflections, shadows, AO, transparencies, and even the DDGI option. In comparison with PS5, for example, the difference in the pre-race moments, the menus, and replays isn't huge, but jumping to gameplay is where the difference is most felt. So how wide is the margin here, and is it worth it? First up, ray traced reflections are easily the most clear cut upgrade. In comparison, we have ray traced reflections enabled on right, and on the left side, we have RT disabled, similar to the console experience where the game reverts to a screen space reflection method. The upgrade is at times huge, and at other times quite subtle. The walls of the tunnel during the Monaco circuit are a highlight, I think. With ray tracing engaged on PC, they accurately reflect the streaks of daylight from the left side of the track. So see how the glossy surface mirrors the street lights, the road signs, and the general detailing of the tunnel ahead. It's all factored in, and the reflection even distorts based on the pattern of the tiling. With ray tracing disabled on left, it still does a respectable job using the old SSR technique, and we get a reflection of the light spill at the end of the tunnel, but the coverage just isn't as complete. Likewise, the surface of the cars also benefit from ray trace reflections, especially in cockpit view. See how, in this case, the fins at either side of the car reflect back onto the glossy finish. Even the steering wheel and the driver's hands reflect around the interior of the cockpit as we drive through. The impact of ray trace reflections isn't always this obvious. In fact, the benefit of this ray traced approach is often in its subtlety, in pushing for a truer to life result. 
Case in point, here's a nighttime race with weather set to heavy rainfall. Now, you'd expect this to be a perfect showcase for reflections on both sides, and looking at the SSR method on left, which is essentially the PS5 and Series X approach during gameplay, the dampened asphalt streets produce a clear, if often exaggerated, mirror image. The problem is, the SSR approach doesn't factor in the way light hits the coarse road surface, the way it should realistically refract, diffusing the detail. Ultimately, SSR creates an almost too crystal clear reflection of the cars, the roadside adverts and the overhead signs across the street. And equally, you may have noticed this SSR method in F123 appears to have a bug. This goes for PC, PS5 and Xbox consoles, but the brightness level of the reflection doesn't match that of the objects. Now, in theory, the screen space image might be taken before shadows are factored in, creating an oddly vivid reflection that's a mismatch for the object itself. The good news is, ray tracing solves this. The colour, the brightness values are all perfectly in line with each other. Yes, the ray traced result doesn't stick out as obviously as SSR across those dark streets, but ray tracing is engaging as it should. Keeping to the benefits of ray tracing, let's take a look at ray trace shadows. Actually, there's a great example of this in comparison with console, the PS5 version in this case, which relies on rasterized shadows in gameplay. With ray tracing enabled on PC, see how the shadow outlines from the spectator stand appear more diffused. At such a distance from the ground, ray tracing simulates the blurred penumbra of a shadow edge. And meanwhile, the car being closer to the ground results in a sharper outline there. It's not an essential detail or as obvious as reflections, but a nice extra. And in the same vein, we have ray traced ambient occlusion. Now this swaps out the screen space AO technique we have on console during gameplay, and on PC, it means we get thicker, more detailed shading across the track ahead. Let's focus just on PC here, with RT disabled versus enabled. On the Monaco starting line, for example, the roadside barriers and buildings ahead are more thoroughly shaded. So, switching between the two, and alongside the other ray tracing features, it gives the whole scene some much needed depth. One last point on ray tracing. A new option is added on console and PC this year called Dynamic Diffuse Global Illumination. Essentially, DDGI gives us ray traced light bounce between surfaces, helping to light corners of rooms and reflects point of color between two nearby surfaces. And yes, again, this is enabled on PS5, Series X and S, except only for replays, pre-match buildups and the menus. Quite honestly though, the impact during gameplay itself is subtle all round in my experience. The best showcase for DDGI is in the menus and the vehicle showrooms. We're switching the mode on and off on PC, just this setting in isolation, you see some benefits. In this example, we see the extra light bounces from the open window and the overhead lamps brighten the room's corners. The shading of certain objects in the scene change too, with DDGI bouncing the dark wood and red carpet colors across to the couch, giving it a darker shade. And likewise, the car showrooms have a similar result, where the underside of this Ferrari is brightened, while the chassis and tires pick up the green glow of the walls. So, all told, it works. It really works. But in gameplay, there isn't always such a huge impact. That's just a sample of the PC difference, but the performance cost is obviously huge. For example, here's the RTX 4080 running at 4K, max settings with no ray tracing features. This is just for perspective, and it shows settings closer to the console experience, and on Monaco, we get to 140 to 150 FPS overall. Or in other words, there's plenty of headroom for a 120 FPS experience at 4K. That's point number one. Point number two is, if we enable all ray tracing features now, immediately the frame rate drops to 40 to 50 FPS. Fortunately, Codemasters includes a huge suite of options to claw back performance. Firstly, and obviously, we have a dynamic risk scaling option, which is likely what PS5 and Series X use sparingly to get to 60 FPS. Alternatively though, there's Nvidia's DLSS, Intel's XESS, and then lastly, AMD's FSR2. Of this trio of options, DLSS is the better pick, and in my case, the quality mode proves best for locking down 60fps. In fact, with DLSS quality engaged on the RTX 4080, rendering at 1440p no less, there's a healthy headroom given performance is around the 80fps mark. Now sadly, we can't push the boat out too much further. Switching DLSS up to the ultra quality mode, which renders at 1662p, 
pushes the GPU just a bit too hard and we're below the 60 FPS line again. So all round the quality mode is the better balance between the image quality and performance. That summarizes the state of ray tracing in F1.23. Honestly, the visual trade-off on consoles makes sense, given the evident cost to keep ray tracing engaged at all times on PC. Yes, the loss of ray tracing features during gameplay on PS5, Series X and S is a bit of a shame. The reflections and ambient occlusion are vastly improved on PC, especially on those wet nighttime races where the more accurate reaction to materials stands out. But the priority is the right one for PS5 and Series X. 60fps and even 120fps modes are at the top of any racing game wishlist and F123 delivers. Frame rates on the road are perfect on every console as a result and the only real snag is the lack of a 120hz mode on Series S. On the plus side, Codemasters still shows off its ray tracing flourishes on console at points where it's better appreciated. For lower key moments, in the replays, the pre-race build-ups and the menus, it's a trade-off, but clearly the most sensible one. Still, I'd be fascinated to see if ray tracing in gameplay is at all possible on console even as an experimental extra mode. I mean, we already see the 120Hz mode dropping the resolution on console, with some advances towards 60fps with ray tracing engaged. But as it stands, F123 is in fine shape, and it'll be curious to see how the next game pushes its Ego Engine tech. But that's all for me today. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to like or subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell for instant notifications as any new video lands. To get a high quality version of this video, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net, and to get in touch directly, just use Twitter. But for me for now, thanks for watching.